This is a online tutorial to uh, get used to and start with New Emacs, the extensible um, text editor, and also with Org Mode, which is the uh, mode inside Emacs, or so the package that we use for the programming. Uh, the purpose of this is to get used to Emacs, uh, give an overview. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to talk about the installation, then we're going to open it, shutting it, suspending it, reading files into it until we reach finally um, the org mode um, chapter. Each video should be quite short um, and it's made in such a way, hopefully slow enough that you can follow along. So um, uh, there is, by the way, a reference card. Um, I'm going to open this here. And uh, the reference card um, is also in GitHub. Um, it's a fairly large document and gives you everything that you need to know about Emacs, if you like. This document itself is in the, the GitHub directory Birkenkrahe. Um, and inside the directory, there's a repo a repository called org. And inside org, you find um, a directory called Emacs. And inside Emacs, you find this, uh, this file tutor.org, which is what I'm using. So let's start with the installation um, of Emacs. It's best if you get this for yourself, even though in the computer lab, we have them all installed. And um, let's have a look at installation instructions. Um, so I'm going to open this in a new window. Uh, the installation instructions are also in this repository org emacs install. There's a bunch of different files. Further down you find the installation of emacs. This is really just a very short checklist, but it should be fine to do it. You click on this link. Um, this gets you to a site where you can download a modified emacs, modified already for Windows. It's ready for programming with the data science language R and LaTeX, which is or LaTeX, which is a, um, a package to um, create publishable documents. So what you need to do here is download the installer. Um, I've already done that um, and I'm just going to do it for the purpose of, of demonstration. So if you download the installer, you get this file here into your downloads or documents directory or wherever it is. And um, I'm just going to do this, put it in downloads. Um, I already have this. It doesn't take very long. And once the installation is done, you can uh, click on the installer. I'm not going to finish this process. You'll have to do it yourself. The computer will ask you, do you want to allow this app for an unknown publisher to make changes? And you should say yes. And if that's the case, you get into the uh, installation dialog here. And you start English, and um, then you uh, go through these different, you accept the agreement, and you go through these various um, configurations. Always click Next, accept all the settings that are suggested to you. And on the last screen, you get a screen called uh, Finish, and then you are finished. Now, in my case, I already have done this. So um, I'm going to just quickly get back to the uh, installation instructions that we used here. And by the way, if you are on Mac and not on Windows, at the bottom of this file, you find a link to Emacs Modified for Mac OS. It's the same thing. Download the installer and just follow the standard instructions. I'm going to go back to the install file. I've run the installer, accepted all standard settings. Um, I have probably added a shortcut to the desktop, which is the quickest way to, to launch Emacs. In fact, the first time you launch it, you can put it down to your taskbar, which is what I have done here. And um, uh, what when, done, when you have done this, um, you can, of course, forever work with Emacs from your desktop. But um, let's be a little smarter and let's find out different ways to open Emacs and different forms of open emacs as well in order to do that you need to open the windows search bar and type path i'm going to do this here i'm going to type path here down here and uh, then i get into a dialog um that you see here sorry that was a bit too fast i'm going to do this again so path suggests edit the system environment variables to do this you need administrative privileges so you can't do this at the computer lab uh, PC, but you should be able to do it on your own PC. 
And you need to be a little careful and follow the instructions, otherwise you might shoot your system down. So I just uh, clicked on that and I get into this dialogue. And um, uh, here you have a button for environment variables. You click on that and uh, the bunch of environment variables um, open up. And this is already quite relevant and interesting. The first one here says home. Now this home um, is the uh, uh, is the directory to which your Emacs should open. So when you click on it, uh, it should open to C users, whatever your name is, whatever your name on your computer is. But this is not the variable we want to change right now. We want to change the path variable. So we go two lines down to path and click on edit. And now this window here shows you the different locations that the computer looks for execute uses to look for executable files. And you see that I already added Emacs here. I'm just going to delete this for the time being and edit it again. Now, um, to add the path, I need to know where the program sits. In order to find out where it sits, I click on the file explorer down here and I try to find Emacs. Now, if you did the standard installation, you will find it in your C drive. Down here, you see C drive. I'm going to click on that. In C drive, you have a directory called program files. So you click on that, double click. And then inside here, you should find Emacs. It, um, if you did the modified Emacs, it's probably going to be called GNU Emacs 27. But uh, so whatever name your Emacs directory has, you click on it, double click on it. And then you find this subdirectory x86, which is your chip and 64 bits. You double click on that. And then you find different directories with different files. And you click on the top one, which is called bin, which stands for binary. And inside here, you find the Emacs file. So these Emacs, Emacs 27.2, Emacs client TW, these are the executable files. But you're not going to add this file. What you're going to do is you add this location. So you go up to the navigation bar and you right click on bin and you copy the address as text. And uh, now you can close the file explorer. We're back to the environment variable window and we click in on new, which means add a new path. Then a new line appears and we just click control V to uh, put this path in here. And now Emacs will be found no matter where we type it on the computer because the computer knows to go to this location. You close this dialog with OK and another OK and a third OK. And now let's test this. OK, i um, just going to show you uh, where I'm at here. I'm going to move this over to the right so you can see it. So now we want to want to test this. We just clicked on the environment variables. We set the path. Um, and um, now we, what we're going to do is we're going to open the command prompt. That's the terminal in the um, in Windows. It's a little uh, defective compared to the Linux terminal, but it'll do for now. So I'm going to go again to the uh, search and type CMD for command. And you see up here appears the command prompt. Now, if you haven't pinned this to the taskbar, you should also activate this menu here and pin it to the taskbar, which is what I've done here down on the right. I've already done this, so I can just click enter and uh, this window will appear. And uh, this is the shell. You can see the home directory, C users Birkenkra. And now at this place, you can actually type Emacs. To do that, um, the Emacs editor should open in its own window. Now, your Emacs editor won't look like that at all because I have already configured it. So I'm going to shut it down again and start it with Emacs minus Q, which you shouldn't do. You can just type Emacs uh, in order to bypass my configuration file. And if I do that, then I get the vanilla Emacs, the pristine Emacs that you just downloaded, which looks exactly like this. And I think um, now we are done with the uh, installation. This one, uh, the installations here assume that you have R installed. Um, uh, we don't want to do that right now. We are just happy to have Emacs and now we can move on and explore Emacs a little bit.